function. It was saying that the function name didn't exist. I determine the issue relates to the position of the include file. Let's see if I can recreate the error as it was last week. Last week, <laughs> yeah, I should just be happy it's working, right? Um, <clears throat> last week, I had that convert somewhere like this, all right? And when I went and tried to do the conversion, I got an error, all right, saying it can't find that function. Even though if we can look, that function clearly exists in my include file, and my include file is in there, and so on and so forth. So, what? Come before what function? No. No. Well, if we pause for a second and listen, perhaps I'll have an opportunity to explain that. It actually is not even the function that calls it. It's the function that sort of starts the chain. So, for example, if I go and I move the include, what calls this function? Convert temperature is called by calculate result. So you might think, you know, I'll put it there, and that should work. Nothing up my sleeves. Save. Still get the air. The function that really gets the ball rolling is up here because this function calls calculate results, so it needs to actually be above this guy. So not even the function that calls it, but the function that sort of starts the chain. So I said, well, why tempt fate? Let's put it way at the beginning, and we get a correct answer, which leads me to say that unless there's some configuration issue that I'm not aware of, some configuration parameter, and one thing about PHP, it can be configured a lot of different ways. There's a lot of options as far as that goes. So unless there's something um, about that, uh, I may have misstated how an include file was processed. I was under the impression um, that it happens in two passes, that the, that, the, that the server in pass one imports all the include files, and then it goes and tries to process the code. It seems like it's only done in one pass then, which means that if it doesn't see it in the include file, all right, if the include file has been processed at the time that it's called, it doesn't know it, all right, it doesn't know it. So, if you're going to start a chain that's going to call something that's in an include file, you better have the include file above that chain. Now, the interesting thing is, and the thing that had me puzzled until I started thinking in terms of my erroneous assumption of multiple passes versus what appears to be happening, and that is one pass, is that it doesn't matter that, in this case, calculate results is called and the function's defined down here, all right? Because that's already part of the PHP page. The difference seems to be with the include file, whereas the include file is brought in, you know, um, and if it hasn't been brought in at the time that that function eventually gets initiated, then it's not going to be available for you. So that was interesting. It appears to be like sort of a one-pass thing. I may be getting confused between this and traditional ASP, whereas I know in traditional ASP there, well, it was a two-pass compiler, where it went, or not compiler, but interpreter, where it brought everything in first in pass one and then went and did it. This appears to be doing it in just one pass. 
So at any rate, the bottom line is if we put this up here, we're back in business. And we have this piece of code that is working. All right. Any questions about what we have here? Yeah. Well, um, I don't know. Why do you ask? I, I just, uh, I remember I had an include file. That's a possibility, again. Uh, that's a possibility. I actually did a lot of Googling on this because even after I, even after I, I had the, the problem solved, it didn't, the, the solution didn't make sense to me. Um, until I started thinking about one pass and two passes. Uh, and even then, when I did some Googling, um, I wasn't able to get an answer. So that's a possibility. Um, Most browsers do just one pass and it's right from the top to the bottom. Well, this isn't, PHP isn't executed by the browser, so that's, told, that's not really relevant here. Right? PHP is executed by the server. No. The server processes PHP code and produces the HTML. So there are no PHP functions on the browser side, right? The browser always gets delivered HTML and CSS and JavaScript. No. <laughs> no. Remember the diagram. All right. Client makes a request. Server processes that request using the PHP, creates an HTML document that gets sent to the client. So, all that PHP uh, um, runs is on the server side. So, by the time it gets over here, it's just a plain old HTML document. So, yeah, that's not really relevant as far as that goes. All right. Um, were you saying something, Don, or someone else? I, I was just, when I had this files, I was using an ASP. Okay. Yeah, that, again, that would be a different issue. Yes. Keeping. That's a style sheet. Right. The banner and navigation contain not style code, but HTML code. So that's what's in the banner include, the HTML code. This is what's in the nav ink, is the HTML code for the nav. What's in the style sheet? Well, just what, what's always been in the style sheet, the CSS code. That's really the, the benefit of, of doing this is that um, is that um, you can include the um, you can include the, um, the, the HTML code uh, along with that in a separate file. All right, so now that we have this working, we can use it on another page, all right? And if we look at our function here, our function is not coupled to the code at all, all right? Uh, by the code, I mean the, the user interface. This is truly a, a black box function. Everything it gets, it gets passed in. This code makes no reference to the page at all. Therefore, it can be used on, on any page. So, I can go in here into my other page if I want. And I can go and make 
And all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my convert. And then we'll edit this. And let's do, remember, this is always going to do centigrade to Fahrenheit. So let's go in and let's, instead of having a text box for temperature, let's allow them to enter the temperature via a drop down. The only reason I'm doing this is this is showing that it doesn't really matter what what the data or where the data rather comes from. And this is going to get old pretty quick, right? But so I'll do just a couple more. And then I'll change where the function is called to hard code in the fact that since this only does centigrade to Fahrenheit uh, conversion, I'll hard code in the value of CF. So my point in doing this is I've taken and I now have that include file on a totally other page, a totally different page. And that different page doesn't have anything um, really in common with the other page in terms of what the form looks like. All right. The form on the first page has a text box and uh, for temperature and a drop down for the type of conversion. I changed this page to have a drop down for the temperature and no type of conversion because the assumption is, is that we're doing centigrade to Fahrenheit. So I can still use that function though because it doesn't matter. That function was written so that the page and the, 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 the business rule or the logic aren't coupled. So my function to calculate the, the temperature conversion doesn't depend on there being a text box for temperature or a drop down for the type of conversion. Any way I can supply that by hook or crook, I can call that function, give it the parameters, and it should work. So let's test this out. So enter temperature in, and this is going to do centigrade to Fahrenheit, so 5 centigrade is an air. But it tells me that it is 32. And the air is what? Oh, I forgot to change the method of the form. There we go. All right, take two. Zero centigrade is 32 Fahrenheit. 5 centigrade is 41 Fahrenheit. Take their word for it. All right. Again, really the benefit of this is the fact that um, it doesn't matter where you get the values from. All right. The function is written so that it can take the parameters that it requires and produce the proper result. And so it doesn't matter where that comes in. Now, Let's think of for your lab how that's relevant. Let's, let's think and let's, let's, try, let's try to apply this to our lab. Uh, for your next lab assignment, what you need to do is you need to take and code uh, a function that will process tuition. All right? And you need to be able to have tuition processed two different ways. All right? You need to 
And again, this is a good test to show that if your function is really reusable, because if it's reusable, then most of your work is going to be in creating the function in the first place. To use it should be largely a piece of cake. Right? You're going to have two pages that call the same function. One page is going to have a text box for the number of hours and a drop down for residency. And you put in the proper number of hours, the proper residency code, and it gives you what your tuition is for the semester. All right. That's one of the pages that you'll create. The other page that you'll create won't have any input at all. Instead, it will show a chart. Well, I guess you don't have to show zero hours, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through, I think the one on our page goes up to 22. All right. And then you have three columns for in county, out of county, out of state. All right. So, what's your function going to look like? What's your function to calculate tuition going to look like? And when I say the word look like, um, I guess I mean what's the signature of the function. And by signature of the function, I mean the name of the function along with the parameters that it's going to accept and what it's going to return. So, the name, I'll give you that one. And you can even change this one if you want. We'll call it Calculate Tuition. What arguments are we going to give it? An argument for the hours and an argument for the residency type. And what's it going to return? It's going to return the tuition, a dollar amount, a number of some kind. So that's the signature of the function. That's all you need to do is you need to give it the hours and the residency type and it should be able to do the calculation from there. Now, how are we going to use that function? Well, in the, and so we'll have an include file that's put at the top of the page that will have our tuition stuff in it. And this page ought to be straightforward. All right. This page, the code to write your function might be a little involved. You're going to need some if statements and so on and so forth. All right. But to call that function should be pretty straightforward, right? Because you're going to get the hours from here. You're going to get the residency type from here. You're going to call the function, and then you're going to output the result. So that should be pretty straightforward. All right. The other one now to create the chart, and let's let's look at at um, the actual chart on our website. How are we going to create something like this? First of all, what is that? HTML table. All right. Mm -hmm. It will have to go through and create the cells. Okay. We could 
call the function 23 times 2 times and, have, and, and, and write. Okay, l l l l let's talk about the brute force. I don't know which way you are implying or not, but let's talk about if we're going to do this the brute force way. All right? Because sometimes that's insightful. So, remember this chart, you know. Use your photographic memory to take a picture of it. All right? Now, I could do this. Output a table cell with a 1 in it. I could call my function with 1 for credit hour and IC for residency status. Okay. And then output that. I'm, j I'm not writing actual PHP code, of course. I'm just describing the process. Then what's in the next cell? Well, one credit hour for out of county. So I could output my calculate function for one credit hour with an out of county. What's in the uh, column next to it? Output a table cell for one credit hour for out of state. All right. That is our first row, right? I've outputted my one. I've outputted Lorain County amount for one, out of county for one, out of state for one. All right. That's row one. We only have to do this 21 more times. <laughs> and we have a winner. All right. So, what's going to be different from this? Well, the next time through, we're not outputting one anymore. We're outputting two. And we're not outputting the amount of one credit hours. We're outputting the amount of two credit hours. And so on down the line. So, you know, what's the, the programmer's mantra? Again, do not repeat yourself. We're, we effectively have a block of code that is going to crank through 22 times. All right? So, first thing to think of in terms of doing this is a loop. Now, if you're clever, pardon me? Oh, I was, I was just going to say, if you're clever, you could probably do this in two loops. Right? Well, let's, let's think about that for a second. Let's think of how we could possibly... Well, actually, let's not think about that. Let's go through, let's go through a loop example. All right? Because we haven't done a loop in PHP, so let's go and let's do a, a loop in PHP. All right? Now, as was mentioned, a loop in PHP, there, there's several different loops in PHP, but, but a common uh, one is a for loop. All right? Now, let's talk about what we are going to do, all right? What we are going to do in this case is we're going to make a times table, right? Now, there's nothing really dynamic about this, right, a times table. I could hand code it other than the fact that it would be boring to hand code it. And what more is I'm liable to mess up at some point. Right? I'm liable to do the multiplication wrong in my head and, and not do it. It'd be better to write a loop to do it than for me to do it um, uh, by hand. So, by a times table, I mean this. We're going to have a row on the top that will show, you know, maybe the multiplication sign, and then we'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. Initially, we'll go up to 9, but we might go in, depending on how much fun we want to have today, we might go in and allow that value to be input. In other words, how big do you want to make the times table? Do you want to make it, you know, a, a, a 9 by 9 or, a, 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 you know, 100 by 100, whatever. Each row, then, of this table is going to be consist like that, and then the cell will simply be 0, you know, 0 times 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 
zero, two, four, and so on. We'll fill it in. All right. So that's what we're going to do. All right. And I'm going to do this a couple steps at a time. Remember, you know, far too many people, I see this like every class, try to do everything all at once. And they run into problems. So might I suggest you create your assignment following the principle of, gee, I know I have to make a table, all right, that has 22 rows in it. But maybe the first pass, I'll make a table that only has one row in it. How much it costs to go one credit hour at LC. And then once I have that done, look to see, well, maybe how can I put that in a loop to make it so that it, it goes a certain number of times. At any rate, let's go and let's make our times table. So let me close out of here. I'm going to go and copy this guy. Actually, um, I'm going to make a times table page. So let me just copy this guy. Or actually, let me copy the index. All right. Now, because we were smart and made include files for these, I can simply go in and put in my include nav, I can put in my times table page. All right. And now every page will have the times table page as a link for it. So let's go and let's open this up in Notepad. Now, here is where in my mind it's critical for you to know the HTML that you need to generate, right? PHP is going to write the HTML for you. Right? Well, you better have a pretty good idea of what you want it to look like. Otherwise, the instructions that you give PHP to generate that HTML aren't going to be very good. So, let's think about what we want our table to look like. I don't mean from an appearance perspective. I mean the HTML code for our table, what we want that to look like. We want a table tag. How many table tags are we going to have? One. We want a TR. And this TR is going to be our headings at the top of this. So we're going to have one of these. And because these are headings, I'm going to put a TH for the times. TH for zero. TH for 1, all the way through a TH for 9. And that will be my first row. So that will be what my first row looks like. Now, we could talk about how we could improve it and streamline it and write PHP code to do that different, but we'll let that go for now. We just want to understand what the, the um, HTML is going to look like for that. Each subsequent row then is going to have a bunch of TDs in it. And the first cell is going to be the number for that row. Each subsequent cell will be that number times the value in the heading. All right. So, in this case, it's going to be a bunch of zeros and so on. So let's go and let's try to build that table. All right. And we'll do it in a brute force way at first, and then we'll look at how we can improve it. All right.
All right. All right, my table. That first header row, there's only one header row, right? And that's constant. Really no math is involved in that. So you know what? I'm going to hard code that guy. Now, we might be able to do better than this, but you know what? Even if we don't, I'm not sweating it. Why? Because there's only one of these. Now, my next row. Now I'm going to go into PHP mode. All right. And I'm going to make a variable called number, or just n. And I'm going to set it equal to zero. Why zero? Because that's the number of my first row. All right. So now I'm going to print. A TD tag. And a value of zero the value of n, rather, which is 0, and then my ntd tag. Going to multiply by one. And output M. And then I'm going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times. And I'll go in and I'll change this one to multiply by 1, this one to multiply by 2, by 3, by 4, by 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This will be the equivalent in your tuition example of, of, of hard coding in the, the 66 function calls. Call one hour for Lorain County resident, one hour for out of county, one hour for out of state, and then so on. Actually, this is one row's worth of that. Let's go and let's make sure 
that our table looks correct for this one row. All right. Looks good for that one row. All right. Well, what can we observe by looking at this? We can observe that from here on, the only thing different about those statements is that second value that I'm multiplying starts at zero and goes up through 9. All right? So, starts at 0, goes through 9. So, that's a perfect candidate to put in a loop. All right? So, I can do something like this. I could say 4 dollar sign i equals 0 i less than 10 i plus plus and go in and replace this with the variable i. Alright? And then that should take the place of all these lines, if I've done it correctly. All right? Let's review that for loop again. The for loop indicates it's a for loop, the word for. The first is the initial value for your counter variable. Every one of these for loops has a counter variable that sort of controls the number of iterations through the loop. So we're going to start that variable off at zero. So the first time through the loop, i is going to have a value of zero. Just like before, the first multiplication we did for that first TD cell, all right, we use zero. We're going to do this as long as i is less than 10, all right? And i++ plus plus simply means we're going to increment i by one each iteration through the loop. So. The bottom line is this loop is going to execute 10 times. All right? The body of this loop is going to execute 10 times. All right? One time, i is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If we were to look immediately after, i would have a value of 10, but it doesn't make that last trip through the loop because this condition is no longer true, so it pops out of that. All right? And we should get our 10 TD cells this way. Well, let's go in and look at this. All right, and well, it should work, all right? Okay. So, now, how are we going to get the rest of our rows? Well, this isn't deja vu for you. We could copy this and say, okay, let's repeat this with n having a value of 1. Okay? And repeat it again with n having a value of 2. That's a little better, all right? But eh, it's still not quite as good as we could be. All right? So what we could do, uh, and let's make sure that that works still, I forgot to output the TRs.
forgot to output the TRs for that. So let's go in and there. Okay. Now we should get. All right. Looks like we're moving in the right direction, right? But again, this could still be tedious to do that nine times and you're more prone for mistakes and blah, 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 blah. What if someone wants a bigger uh, times table? Yeah? Could there be a difference if you use echo instead of print? No. No. So essentially what I want to do is this block of statements I want to loop through. Varying n from 0 to 9, blah, 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 blah. All right, so I will go and I will, let's get rid of the duplicate copies. And what I could do is, Just encircle that TR code in a PHP loop. So now I want to start n at 0, do it as long as n is less than 10, and each, through, each time through the loop increment n by 1. And we should have then our final times table. Now I did that with a nested loop. Now, oh, I, I can go up just for completeness. I could probably go in and replace this with a little loop. All right, and there we have that eliminated, that duplication limited, uh, eliminated as well. So we have very concise code. And we could do something like, if we wanted to, um, I won't do it in the interest of time, but we could accept the maximum value from uh, a text box on the page, and then instead of doing it up till 10, we could do it up till whatever the maximum value was. And in that way, it would uh, make this a little more dynamic still. Now, I said that we could do this in two loops, your tuition example. All right. I'm hoping one of the loops is obvious. All right. What would one of the loops be a loop for? Number of credit hours, right. So in other words, one loop will generate, you know, well, let's go back to
one of the loops will generate each of these rows. So your outer loop will generate each of these rows. How would you use a second loop though? Not really. They all they all follow the, they all follow the same formula. The only difference is the, the the rate is different for each of them. I guess the question is 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 clear we have an outer loop to go. I mean we we created a, essentially the outer loop here, right? In our times table example, we went from zero to nine. You'll go from one to twenty two. Okay, we've we've done that. Now the question is is how do we come up with this inner loop? Well, if you consider this, if you write it so that your residency status, instead of being an IC, OC, or OS, you could do this a couple of ways. You could have an array with those three residency statuses in there, or you could simply say, Zero stands for in county, one stands for out of county, two stands for out of state, and then you have a little loop inside there to call each of those. All right? So you'd have one loop to generate each row, and then you'd have a loop to generate each of these cells. Now, doing two loops is not a requirement for this lab. I just put that out there. If you think you have it down with one loop, that that would be a cool little extra challenge to try to add to this lab. Um, if you don't do it with two loops, what would you have? Well, you'd have one loop to do the number of credit hours, and then you'd simply make three hard-coded calls. One to call the tuition for Lorain County, one to call the tuition for out of county, one to call the tuition for out of state. If you do it that way, that's acceptable. All right, but if you want an extra challenge, try to do it with the second loop. Questions over any of this? I can see how this gets a little confusing because you have mixes of HTML and PHP in here. All right, but in my mind, really the key in doing this correctly is a couple things. First of all, knowing what the HTML should be generated as. One very nice debugging tool that you have is you can actually go and do a view source to see the HTML that gets generated. All right. So if things, if you remember uh, the first time through, when I forgot the TR tags, it was all in one line. I instantly recognized that that was a problem. That I forgot the TR tags. But had I not, if you go in and do a view source, you can see the TRs and THs and everything that's defined and do that. Now, what if I wanted this table to look different? What would I change in my PHP? I could give it an ID or classes, either way. But I really wouldn't change a lot, right? Because I would just put the hooks in to allow my CSS code to take over. So maybe I'll go and output a, uh, an ID on here, you know, for this table. And then I can go into my external CSS file and, I don't know, maybe do something like times with 100% or something like that. And then I could make the cell width uniform and, and all that sort of stuff too. 
But in a way, that was sort of half a trick question because you don't do anything to make the appearance. You use the tools, um, the, 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 the CSS tool, the way that it was intended. And uh, if anything, you just would add an ID or a class or something to the HTML. Um, all right, I'm going to output this uh, and then we'll go over to lab.